Well, hello again. Uh, today's recording uh, is going to be particularly on Power BI. How to visualize data, how to best describe data uh, using Power BI's uh, visualization functions. So, let's begin with an example. First off, you know, I want to go back to what I was looking at, where I found the data sets. I'm looking at, the, as you see, the USA facts. And there's all kinds of data sets provided here by, by area, <clears throat> by topic. And that is whether it's a debt, or revenue, it's on security, it's on economy, people in society. So I can choose any of these. And the particular data set, for instance, you know, I think the one I chose I'm going to uh, share with is, uh, was on jobs and income on the economy. And when I click on that, and just a little more description here as you see and then for instance if i want to uh, pick and choose each of these that each graphic here is representing the data set there's a data set data file associated with each of those graphics and i chose those employment employment population uh, median median annual wage those kinds of things and as you see, each one of them is basically when I when, it, when I click on that one, it was downloading the data sets in Excel. So one of them that I used, like I said, was the job and uh, employment situation. The original file is provided like this. Um, it is not the, the formatting of it. As you see, the data is the way it is uh, tabulated is not really conducive to be able to use uh, by any kind of visualization or graphics so I had to kind of manipulate a little bit put in a format like this for instance years on unemployment years on employment our next tab is employment by sector by year employment by state by year all is basically taken out of this uh, data source and manipulated and put in the format that uh, that can be utilized by Power BI so uh, I'll, let's go back to Power BI and each of those tabs, as I was showing on Excel, are basically corresponding to each of these tabs here on Power BI. So, for instance, the first one is the year, years and employment, which is the one that we were looking at here. Years, years of employment, years not of employment, but years and employment. So, the first column, column A, is years, and it's starting with 1948 all the way to 2020, and the number of people in the workforce. As you see, the first uh, 1948, it was 58 million people, and now close to 148 million people in the workforce. <clears throat> so, or next one is, again, number of years. This one is available starting in 2005. Uh, that's employment by sector data. And on top row here, empl uh, employment areas by sector like food services, administrative services, agriculture, arts, construction, education, all those. So uh, going back to again, Power BI. And the first one is this, this graphics. Uh, let's kind of focus on how this graphic was made. So I'm going to click on that one and you'll see that, you know, the score is kind of uh, framing the graphic. When you pull, actually, I'm going to do one example. I'm just showing you, and I'm going to do actually one full example to describe how that works. Is uh, when you pull data into X, uh, Power BI from Excel, and it can be built, um, it can be used from any data source. It doesn't have to be Excel; it can be any data source. And it's preparing the data sets, loading into Power BI, and then you can start working with that. So. Uh, Let's do one example. So I'm going to go back all the way to the end of these tabs. And then I'm going to add a tab. And let's call this, uh, I'm going to name it as sample. Uh, for the sake of, you know, using right now for presentation purposes on the, during this video. And I will connect using the, I, there are several options that I can use. One is get data. And when I do that, you can see that there are various different data sources, whether Excel, Power BI itself, Power BI data sets, or databases, or data flows, uh, Dataverse, SQL Server database, analysis services, which is common with SQL Server, 
any text file, CSV file, the ones that I was showing you on the website, those were uh, coming originally in CSV or text format. You can directly uh, pull from web, curate a feed, uh, blank query, uh, all these. And there can be more as you see the options. And right now I do have Excel file. And that is the one here, the one I was using for employment. So I'm going to choose that one. Click over, open. So now it's uh, showing me the available tabs on that Excel file. So I can, let's see, okay, I want to choose, um, let's say, employment by occupation. I'm going to pick that one. So what you see here now is the kind of preview. This is a preview of showing what the source data is, looks like. This is how the source data is tabulated. Uh, year column, and then uh, showing all the occupations, the, the, uh, the rows. There are so many rows as you see dedicated to occupation names and then the data sets the number of people employed in those areas by these years there are two options one is you can directly load it the other one is you can transform data and let's look at what it does the transform data it's going to open up this in a different window and notice that it says power query editor the power query editor this is the exact same editor that I, the other day I was showing uh, Power Query using Microsoft Excel. This is the same utility, the same uh, feature or same function that Excel offers. Power BI has the same uh, Power Query editor. And here you can transform the data any, any way you want before actually loading into Power BI. It might be various reasons, the formatting, the formatting wise, the way it is tabulated. Uh, you might uh, apply uh, a little bit of manipulations to it and do all those things before, again, putting the Power BI, using the Power Query, uh, complete those, and then you can close and save. And then that can be ready and available to Power BI to be used uh, for the graphic, for the visualizations. And then notice that the uh, function box here as you make changes and manipulations it's basically uh, going to be generating the the code that come with that and also it is similar to for instance in excel's power pivots there is a, a language it's, it's using also power query it's using a language called dax dax it's similar to that to that one um so for my purposes, when I was doing this, I didn't have to worry about you know, applying additional extra transformations. So I'm going to go ahead and close this one. Say no. Okay. And go back there again and choose that data set. And I was looking at the employment by occupation. So I'm going to choose after seeing this again, the uh, the review, the way the data is structured in the source it shows. I'm going to click on load. Notice that when it's loading, actually, there are several tabs loaded, so it's refreshing all of them. All right, so now let's take a look at the right hand side under the fields. I pulled in several different data sets from the same Excel file, uh, from the same employment data, and the one I wanted to choose was, <coughs> excuse me, the one I chose was uh, employment by uh, <clears throat> occupation by the year, which is this. So I'm gonna enlarge this, not enlarge, just uh, show the details. And basically, I have all these fields. Notice that the year is shown at the bottom, and all the, and it doesn't show the uh, the sigma symbol because it's not this is not a value a subject to be added or you know uh, to be graphed and plotted. This is basically an axis. So what I did was, you know, actually, what I'm going to do now is first I want to choose what kind of graphic I want to use. 
looking at the nature of the data, for instance, you know, as you know, not every different, every possible option can be used in it for every different da uh, data set. The, the nature of data is such that I chose uh, stack column chart, this one here. So when I make, make that selection, notice that uh, this section get populated. So I'm going to use year. I know that year is my axis. So I'm going to put this into axis box. So it's going to show the year here uh, on the X axis. And then I'm going to choose. I have all these options that I can show on a graphic, but if I choose every single one of them, it'll be extremely crowded. So, you know, it's not going to, it's going to look kind of gibberish. So I'm going to choose, for instance, um, any kind of occupation area that I want to show on the graphic. For instance, let's say, what would that be? Architecture, arts and design, uh, building and grounds cleaning and maintenance. Uh, this one is uh, business and financial operations. This one is cashiers. So I chose one, two, three, five occupations. So to make this look better, I'm going to enlarge it. So now let's take a look at this. What are we, what are we seeing here? We see one, two, three, four, five different uh, colored regions. Or basically, this is a stack graph, right? So each bar is stacked. And on each bar, I'm showing five different occupations listed. And as you see, I chose my years uh, for the x-axis and starting with the 2000, uh, actually this one is starting with 2005, no, 2001, all the way to um, 2020. And for instance, you know, the top one, the pink area is uh, cashiers. So you can see their, uh, how they're going each of these years. There are some years up, a little bit down, a little down, it's going up again. So uh, the bottom here is, uh, what is it saying here? Um, architecture and engineering, the blue section. Actually, you can see the legend here. The legend shows clearly what those are. And then you can see uh, the numbers. <clears throat> so that's how you would be able to visualize uh, visualize it with using the Power BI uh, for the data set that is in this case um, tabulated or staged in Excel or stored in Excel. Um, let me just kind of make this a little smaller so I can put another graph. We can try another graph here for instance. I'm going to choose the funnel. So basically the same graph turned into funnel, but it's not, you know, it's not going to tell me much. You know, when you look at that, okay, what is it that I have? I chose those. I'm going to choose actually the same five options. I mean, occupations. One, two, three, four, right? One, two, five. Okay. I choose those five. And I'm going to click, uh, delete this actually. And let's start a new graphic. Let's call it funnel. And do the same thing. I'll put the year in axis after choosing. Hold on, I'm sorry. I'm taking it back. We don't have axis, right? Because this is not a stack bar. This is not a chart. So it says add data fields here, values. And, okay. So data, data series or data fields. Um, I'm going to put here again, year. And then I will choose one, two, and three occupations. Let's see if this shows me any good information. Again, keep in mind that given the nature of the data. Well, it's showing me the years. But it's not telling me what is it that I'm looking at. Look at that. Construction, construction keeps going like this 
but I chose three different occupations. Okay, it shows the construction, it shows the computer and mathematical, it shows the uh, community and social service. But it's not showing in a way that I can easily understand it. So the purpose of this example was not every graphic type or every type of visualization is going to be suitable to every single uh, uh, type of data sets. So let's clean that. I can choose uh, the line chart. I'm going to use a line chart. Well, the line chart is similar to the, the uh, charts, the bar charts. You're going to have X and XY uh, graphic, and you're going to have an axis. So I'm going to put that year again in the axis. And then I'm going to choose, let's say, again, one, two, and three uh, occupations <coughs> for all those years. Okay, there you go. So I'm going to on that one there you go so now you can see the uh, <clears throat> legend so what does legend tell me here is okay the blue one is a community and social service uh, the dark one is the middle one here computer and ma uh, mathematical in the top one is construction and extraction so you can see for the given years starting again between 2000 and 2020 20 years you can see the trend in a trend fashion how those numbers are going that um, what was the top one again let's get rid of this again uh, top one was construction so when you look at the construction figures it is starting up high here anyway and it's following this kind of trend and actually as you're just hovering the mouse along the the trend line it is showing you clearly those three occupations along with their numbers the number of uh, employment number of people who work in those areas so that's how you can also uh, pick and choose and decide what kind of graphic to use visualization to use that would <coughs> excuse me that would best visualize you know in other way best in the best possible way to communicate the information that you're trying to give again going back to this uh, what we have on this table on this list and this is the pictorial representation of that data set so power bi is has basically it gives a lot of it offers a lot of functions and power uh, to be able to visualize various different data sets very complex ones then you can use them and also it has drilling capabilities so what do I mean by that let's see if I can remember here now I'm gonna delete this again and I'm gonna pick again the in this case I'm gonna choose the uh, cluster bar chart let's see if it's gonna be looking good I'm going to see the clustered column chart. Okay. Year axis and only three options, uh, occupations. Two and three. Okay. So this is the clustered bar chart. Again, three legends here, and it shows three different bar charts. They're not stacked like the ones we were looking at here. Not this one this is stack this is clustered okay there was I'm trying to find there was a a way to basically add uh, what is it called the drilling feature the drilling feature it might be subject matter of another video because it takes a different setup and uh, I can better explain after I you know come up with that setup with the proper data set supporting it and then creating a visualization with the drilling features what it does is I will explain that in another video again uh, as you drill as you basically click on those uh, each of those charts for instance it uh, it shows all the detail numbers and information 
and also it goes all the way down to the smallest the the, the bottom the bottom of it so right now for the sake of this uh, presentation stay with this one again what is, we were saying is is this is a clustered uh, bar chart um what else we can do with that one let's see i'm going to click that delete that and then i'm going to choose pie chart can i use pie chart in a meaningful way we'll see i'm doing the pie chart <clears throat> and in this case the options here changed notice that there is no axis again there, there is no axis for pie chart right it's not x y kind of a representation of graphic or two-dimensional representation so i will put data field here again my data field is year and i will again choose those three occupations let's see what we have as you notice it looks pretty crowded why because my data is years 20 years so basically for all those 20 years it is showing the distribution of these occupations into those 20 years while that looks crowded it's not going to help much if it was let's say you know uh three or four sections that i'm then i'm trying to show then a pie chart would have worked but in this particular setup pie chart is not the best option so i'm going to delete that um what else we can do get more visuals there's an option it says get more, more visuals and here import visual from file these are the one thing i need to give uh i need to mention is this the power bi that i'm using the free version i downloaded and it's a free version uh, for kind of you know fooling fooling with that to get a feeling of it it is actually a very powerful and not very cheap uh application it's premium version uh, goes up to approximately sixty thousand dollars. It is uh, not premium version. I think it's about the ten plus thousand dollars. And Power BI is. I um, mean, I come out a lot, a lot. You know, a lot of companies for their visualizations. Power BI is one of those most uh, in demand kind of uh, visualization tools. Typically, the ones I'm seeing is Power BI, uh, Tableau, uh, Click. Click view, um, very similar. Those are or business objects. Those are the visualization tools, and Power BI is really, you know, uh, has gained a lot of popularity in the industry. So it's really good, I think, if uh, if you're thinking that you know you're gonna you want to work as a data analyst using Power BI as your visualization tool, uh, you can't go wrong with that one. I think, and I would I I use that you know uh, in the past in several different contracts power bi presentations i mean uh, visualizations and it really is powerful and the beautiful thing is it is a microsoft product microsoft power bi like i said you remember i was showing you a power query editor that is uh, it's not excel it's not within excel it is not it does not belong to microsoft office family yet it is well in the microsoft family and uh, sharing a lot of similarities with the power uh query features in excel <clears throat> and again it's giving you all the options including web you can download anything from web and uh transform it if you if you need to and bring it into into power bi to manipulate any way any which way you want and i want to show you a few of these options uh visualizations that i created before this particular one this one is about what is it saying uh employment types for employment types there you go so again for all those years it's showing it's not showing by the year this one is showing basically uh in a tree map it's called the tree map and it is shown in squares in relation to the rest of the others like for instance you see the bigger the biggest tile the biggest square is what is the saying uh, let me call this uh office and administrative support so that's the the largest employment that is all over like it's not you know again showing by year 
that's uh, uh, since 1948, all the numbers it's looking at, and it's adding them all. And the least one, the smallest one here is showing farming, fishing, and forestry. So basically the purpose of, as you see, the, the tree map kind of visualization is showing <coughs> this, the different the sizes, the tiles, uh, with the various different sizes. And again, those sizes are determined in relation to the others. And you can tell easily, okay, this is the smallest one. This is the largest one. Okay, there is management, business and financial uh, operations. Construction, extraction, and installation, maintenance, and repair. You see that those four are almost identical. The number number of employees, each of them. This one is 13 million. I'm sorry, this is much bigger. This is all combined number uh, over the 20 years. But all four are very comparable. And also here is a large one: sales people, sales and uh, related fields, the occupations. And what was the the light blue one is um food services so those are basically comprising the largest uh, in relative terms again the employment areas and it's going here the kind of a smaller fields like here arts and that one is a community and social services and this one is architecture and engineering those are the smaller in relation to the rest of the occupational area so as you see there is a source of it again. I want to go back to Excel and which tab was it? Um, occupation. Uh, I think it was this one here. Oh, this is my state. Yeah, I use that, you know, same. Oh, hold on. Let me go back to this again. I am using for this one. Oops, it's kind of freezing. Why ah, it's freezing now. I'm sorry. Okay. Um that is again occupation. Yeah. I'm using the same data set and we're looking at on Excel. This one here. And this is just another way of uh presenting data to give totally different opinion uh, kind of perspective to the user. I mean, you, by looking at this, imagine that, by looking at this, there is no way one can extract and understand this kind of picture. Kind of, you know, okay, this one is the largest, this one is farming sm sm uh, smallest section. So how can you tell that by looking at it? Say, oh, okay, yeah, you can look at it at the numbers and stuff, and, but, you know, hey, without even doing any kind of manipulation, you, typical users are executives, <coughs> financial executives, marketing executives, um, accounting executives, whatever, or operational executives, those guys, you know, what they need is, is from my experience, when I present them my results, my reports, tables, charts, uh, visualizations, what have you, uh, the number one thing that they say, that their number one design, uh, desire is, or, or request is, give me something that jumps out of paper, jumps on me, jumps at me, you know, I can look at it without thinking, without doing any kind of analysis, thinking, uh, any kind of, you know, falling around, like this one here, I can look at the picture, maybe a few numbers along with that, and I can see the situation. I can understand what's going on as far as what this data set is talking about. So, you want to make it as easy as possible for the executives to understand when they look at this data set. Or picture actually how you bring it to this picture how you manipulate data behind the scenes you go from databases to databases you you can write a lot of queries and SQL scripts you can stage in several various different uh, uh, positions and manipulate you can apply lots of complexities it's not what it's not what they care about what they care about is if you want to work as a data analyst or data engineer or data scientist, and uh, you're particularly providing visualization kind of services, working heavily with data, um, it is what what is expected of you to present in a way that executive can easily 
um, understand the picture. That's what it is. So yeah, that's uh, I wanted to talk about today on Power BI, how to use it and how to use in conjunction with Excel. And again, it can be any other data set. Well, thank you very much uh, for watching my video.